Hello again. A number of you have asked about my remote focus control setup and uh, how I've put that together. So this video is all about that. I've made a number of remote focus control setups, uh, for one for my Canon lens, one for my Newtonian telescope and another for a friend for his setup and they're all based on the same uh, basic elements. So let's just start by just touching on what's the benefit of remotely controlling your focus rather than just going up to a telescope and turning the focus control knob. Well the obvious thing is it prevents you from making the telescope wobble and that wobble can take time to dissipate, spoils your view, but also it can actually disturb your pointing, your polar alignment, your star alignment, and your telescope pointing all disturbed by touching it of course. But another nice thing about being able to control it remotely is if you're streaming the images from your telescope to a computer and you can control your focus from the same computer, you can adjust your focus and actually see the image change right in front of you as you change the focus. And that's a really powerful thing to be able to do. Of course, if you use a button off mask for your focusing, then the actual action of putting the button off mask on your telescope and taking it off can also disturb your telescope, so you need to be very careful to do that gently. Now, there are other benefits of remotely controlling your focus. Uh, one is that you can control everything remotely, you don't have to go out to your telescope at all, and you can integrate your focus into uh, the larger system of, of controlling your imaging sequencing and imaging session. So programs like Sequence Generator Pro, uh, Astrophotography Tool, Nina, etc., uh, will integrate focusing uh, into uh, your workflow. And one of the things that those programs bring is autofocus. And autofocus is essentially where the, there'll be a pause in your imaging sequences and you will have the program automatically take an image, assess how well focused the stars are and then change the focus a little bit and then change again and change again. And it might try, let's say, 11 different focus points and fit uh, a curve to the quality of the focus and then find out where the center of that parabolic curve is and then move back to that position in order to be at the best focus point and that can all be done completely automatically by the computer provided you have this remote focus control. Another attraction is temperature compensated focus. If you have a telescope that's got a significant amount of metal in it, particularly if the tube is made of metal, then that metal will actually expand and contract with temperature. So obviously as it warms up it gets longer, as it cools down it gets shorter and that moves the focus position and if you don't do something about that then uh, your focus will gradually uh, creep away from being at its optimum point as the temperature typically falls overnight. So the idea of temperature compensated focus is you have something measuring the temperature and actually automatically moving the focus as the temperature falls in order to try and keep yourself at the optimum position in the first place. So there are a number of different types of motors. Clearly it's a motor that you're going to use because you're trying to turn a focusing mechanism. So it's going to be some kind of motor that does the turning and there are two basic types of motor, DC motors and stepper motors. Now, stepper motors are really the best type to use because they have, provide a very precise angular rotation and they operate in kind of steps. Whereas a DC motor runs at a certain speed and how far it moves is really controlled by the amount of time that you energize it for. But actually all the setups that I've built have been put together using DC focus uh, motors or DC motors uh, that are pretty low cost and they have worked really well for me and so far I haven't upgraded to a stepper motor but I certainly could do in the future. And common ones to see are the ZWO uh, EAF and the high tech Astro uh, focus motor controllers. There are moonlight stepper motors and moonlight focusers. Uh, and there's also the Skywatcher uh, focus motor, water focus motor. So these are the setups that I've put together. The one on the left here is my Canon EF to one, uh, 100 to 400 millimeter zoom lens, which I've used quite a lot with uh, ASI uh, cameras from ZWO and filter wheels to do uh, mono imaging. And uh, the one in the middle is my Quattro 8CF Skywatcher Newtonian. Uh, that also is uh, set up with this remote focus 
uh, but with a different mechanical arrangement to the one on the left. And then the one on the right is one that I put together for a friend of mine. He has this uh, Canon EF 300mm lens and the, the kind of the Meccano of it was uh, was different and uh, but but the but the basic motor and controller was identical in fact the motor and controller are identical across all three of these setups so at the heart of this is the Skywatcher autofocuser and you can see it's a very cheap item uh, it's just 57 pounds gets you the motor this cable and a little manual uh, control adjuster which actually I don't use and I substitute that for the the controller DC motors uh, motor controller uh, which enables me to control the motor from the computer. And this is the latest version of the Hi-Tech Astro DC Focus controller. It's £79 at the moment in the UK. And uh, mine actually doesn't look like this. Mine is the previous version, which is in a slightly larger black box, but basically has the same functionality. You connect it via USB to your computer, and you connect it to the motor and to a power source, and uh, and you've got remote control from your computer. You'll also notice there's a couple of buttons here which enable you to actually make the focus controller move, which is useful during setup. Make sure you can test it and, and see that it's moving okay. So that's the controller. And the other thing that's common to my setups is that I use GT2 pulleys, which actually um, are used quite a lot in things like 3D printers. Uh, and these pulleys are they're toothed pulleys and use them with a toothed belt, a GT2 belt, uh, and uh, that that enables the the motor to to be connected to the thing that we're turning. So in general, you've got these two pulleys. One of them might be the focus ring of a lens, or the, or the other, or it might be another GT2 pulley. And then we've got the pulley that's actually on the motor shaft itself. So I worked through the maths. Uh, there's a little bit of maths involved in working out what pulley belt length you needed, given the size of the two pulleys and the gap between them. So you see here we've got two pulleys, one is diameter D1, the other is diameter D2, and a gap between them of size G. And then the length of the belt is this distance S uh, multiplied by two, because we've got another distance S there, plus the contact distance on the, on the pulley two, plus the contact distance on pulley one. And then you see down the bottom here, you see the maths for calculating S, this angle theta, and then the angle theta is used in the calculation of C1 and C2. And then finally here you calculate the belt length that you need. And that's been a really useful thing. I put it in Microsoft Excel, as you can probably see, to calculate my pulley length based on the setup that I'm implementing. So let's start with the Canon EF 100 to 400 setup. And what I particularly like about this setup is it's not just about providing remote focus control. The setup actually also enables you to balance this configuration. Uh, and uh, so it's really nice from that point of view. And you'll see how I use the Arca Swiss plates and clamps to enable balance uh, on this setup. The Arca Swiss plates, by the way, are from Amazon. Uh, and the clamps as well. So you can buy a clamp, 50mm clamp that comes with a 50mm plate, just £12.99, and you can buy a 100mm Arca Swiss plate uh, for £8.99, from Amazon, both from Amazon Prime. So the setup here with the Canon lens is to use a 40 tooth GT2 pulley along with a 350mm belt. And that's based on the center of rotation of the lens uh, focus ring being 74.2 millimeters approximately away from the, the center of the shaft on the motor. And you can see here the Amazon uh, pages. You can buy four of these 40 tooth pulleys for 9.99, and you can buy a 350 millimeter GT2 belt for 7.59. So they're pretty low cost items. But you will see when I show you the setup and how I build it that there are a number of metal, there's a, a metal block and two metal plates that you need to fabricate as well. And I've just used my tools in the garage, bought some metal plate and a little block of aluminium and cut them to size, drilled holes, bent them on a vise, etc. So I'm now going to show you how I assemble this setup. So we start with a standard Vixen dovetail bar, it's 335mm long and I've then made an aluminium block 50 by 42 by 16 millimeters and this uh, is 
uh, has two holes, clearance holes through it, which align with the two holes that I've made in this Arca Swiss clamp. So these are M5 clearance holes, and I've got two M30, M4 by 35 millimeter screws there, countersunk heads, and I've countersunk the heads far enough that uh, there's no protrusion of the heads on the dovetail clamp. So that then goes onto the, the block. The purpose of the block is to raise the, this uh, clamp handle on this clamp up above the Vixen plate far enough that uh, uh, you can get your hands onto it to adjust things. So the screws go through, I'll turn that over. And I've got two M4 washers and two M4 lock nuts. So I'm basically just going to assemble those now onto the bolts, put the washers on first, then the locking nuts. These are these nylon lock nuts that you can get. And we'll just tighten those up. Just get them finger tight first. It's a little bit fiddly until I go on. So I'm just going to hold those nuts on the back side and then tighten up the bolts. for this. Good and tight. Okay, so that's now fitted, that's really secure and I can open and close that clamp. So that's the first step done. So the next step is to fit the shoe for the 9x50 guide scope onto the Vixen bar. And for that purpose I've filed four slots and then tapped a pair of M4 holes so that I can mount the shoe on top and then I've got these M4 by 18 countersunk head bolts which will drop in and I'll just tighten those up with an Allen key. Just get them nice and tight. They don't work loose. Okay, so that enables me now to fit the 9x50 guide scope. Nicely. But for now, I'm going to take that off. And we're ready for the next step. So the next step is to manufacture the L bracket to support the motor. If you take the front plate off the motor, you can uh, fashion an aluminium plate which will support, support the motor, have the hole for the motor shaft and then two countersunk holes so that you can bolt the motor uh, to the plate and then two additional holes for bolting the plate onto the 50mm Arca Swiss plate. Like a Swiss plate I've drilled and tapped a pair of M3 holes on there so I think the first thing I'll do here is to bolt the plate to the Arca Swiss, uh, the steel plate to the Arca Swiss plate I've got some split washers here to prevent this from working loose
that's one. That's the other. Should just tighten these up. Make sure they're good and tight. Okay, so my L bracket is firmly secured to my Arca Swiss plate. Now I'm going to fit the motor. And I'm reusing the little countersunk screws that came with the motor. So we'll pop those in here. These are cross heads. and just get them loosely positioned first. And now I can tighten them up properly. Okay. So next thing to do is to fit the GT2 pulley on the end of this and you may need to modify the hole down the middle, it's a 5mm bore originally I think I've opened that out a little bit and made sure there's a, a suitable flat anyway making sure that it will fit uh, snugly onto the shaft of the motor like that and then we can tighten up the grub screws that clamp the pulley onto the shaft. It can get a bit stuck in the grub screw sometimes. And make sure those are nice and snug as well. There we go. So the next step is to make this uh, steel plate. It's uh, two mil steel, and essentially it's made so that we can bolt the other Arca Swiss clamp onto here and then it has a hole here which is of a suitable size so that when we bring in our 100mm Arca Swiss plate which has got a locking screw in it so that screw will go straight through that hole so the arrangement we're looking for is essentially this so I'm going to bolt these two parts together first I've got countersunk clearance holes here and I'm using four M3 by six countersunk head screws to make the attachment and I've drilled and tapped four M4 threaded blind holes in the bottom of the clamp. So I can now line this up. And fit the screws. I'm just tightening those up so they're good and tight. Okay. So that's done. So we can now assemble this plate with the 100mm Arca Swiss plate 
using the screw in that plate to pass through the hole in the steel plate and then I use a piece of black rubber foam about one mil thick just to prevent slippage and then bolt that whole assembly to the L bracket on the lens. Now I just need to shift things to get them nice and square and then we can tighten everything up using the Allen key. Just checking before it's too tight that everything's really nice and square. You particularly want the Arca Swiss plate to be parallel to the lens but also the Arca Swiss clamp wants to be square to the lens. Okay, and that's a really good solid connection. So if we bring in the plate now, we can mount that Arca Swiss plate into the clamp. So hopefully you can see how that works now. We can undo this clamp and slide this forwards and backwards for balance in one direction and the whole uh, Vixen plate will slide backwards and forwards in the saddle of the mount for balance in the other direction. So, so far so good. We can also put the 9x50 guide scope in there now as well and we're starting to get much closer to our required setup. So the next thing to do is to fit the motor. So the motor is already on its plate and this is a simple uh, case of opening the clamp and dropping the motor in place and now you can see the reason for this Arca Swiss clamp gives you the ability to tension the belt. So let's fit the belt to the lens. So the belt goes over the front of the lens and then over the GT2 pulley, slide that in, pop it over the pulley, get it nice and squared up and then pull it out tight, put the tension that I want on the belt and tighten up the pulley. Let's put the hook back on the lens. So now we've got a properly tensioned belt, full balance capability and I can now fit the Canon adapter onto the back here. In fact, I'll fit the Canon adapter first to the camera. Put it onto the filter wheel. And this has all been checked out for back focus. There we go. And because the Canon lens has a rotation knob on it you get that rotation facility as well so you can frame your shot in rotation. Let's just zoom out so you can see it a bit better. And there's the whole setup ready to go on the mount. Again we can rotate the camera using the lens's own rotation locking knob. We can tension the belt using this Arca Swiss uh, clamp and we can adjust our balance using this Arca Swiss clamp moving the camera assembly forwards and backwards. If you need more adjustment you can just use a long, longer Arca Swiss plate there and then finally the balance in the other direction. We we'll move the whole thing this way on the mount. So let's take that to the mount. So I'm just demonstrating here how to balance this setup. So initially I'm balancing it with the Vixen Dovetail Horizontal so I can slide it left and right until I achieve balance in this direction. That's nicely balanced now. And then turn it 90 degrees. You can see it's way off there, it's camera heavy. So slide the camera forward on the Arca Swiss clamp. Still slightly camera heavy. Slide it forward some more. Uh, 
that's pretty close, just a little bit more. And there we go, and now we're really nicely balanced. And here's the focus adjustment in action on the mount. So I just wanted to show you, I've applied this exact same technique to implementing a, a focus motor for a friend's Canon EF300L IS lens. Uh, exactly the same principle. I've got the motor with the GT2 pulley, the belt, the Arca Swiss plate and clamp for adjusting the belt tension. Slightly different arrangement of the steel plate on the bottom uh, to get from the L bracket of the lens, which is here, forward to a position so that the belt runs nicely in the centre of the focusing ring for this lens. But essentially the only thing that's really changed there is the the shape of this 2mm plate. It has got a fairly short uh, Arca Swiss plate on here, I think it's only 60mm, of course can use a longer one for uh, balancing reasons for needing to do that. And uh, again I can just demo the focus running for you. Let's just zoom in a little so you can see it. If you can see that turning. And that works really nicely as well. So now let's take a look at the equivalent setup on the Skywatcher Quattro 8CF Newtonian telescope. The scope comes with a dual speed Crayford focuser, which works like this. And this is what we're going to modify. So we'll begin by using an Allen key and remove the four bolts that hold the focuser onto the focus tube. The large thumb wheel in between these bolts is the friction adjustment knob and we're going to need to loosen that off as well and then finish removing the, the four bolts and take the focuser off. Now we can take out the four bolts and remove the friction adjustment knob. Now we need to take the two knobs off of this end of the focuser. So we use the suitable size Allen key to loosen the grub screws on each of the two focus knobs. And then remove the knobs. The larger knob can be a little tight. Might need a bit of a pull to get it off. And there we go. Now what you need to fabricate here is an aluminium block 54 by 30 by 10 millimeters with a number of holes in it as you can see. There are four corner holes which align with the four holes on the focuser and a central hole which aligns with the center hole for the friction knob. The other four holes in the aluminium block are purely there to reduce the weight of the block. The focus knob is essentially the same as the original one but has a longer thread on it. It's a, uh, an M6 by 20 thread with one millimeter pitch. Also we're going to replace the bolts. The bolts are M4 by 30. So let's assemble this. So we put the block on first and then we need to add the steel plate. This is an L bracket made out of two millimeter steel plate with matching holes for the aluminium block and now we can put the bolts through both the L bracket and the aluminium block and the focuser. At the moment they're just resting in place there's nothing for them to thread into until we put them on the telescope. Now we can put the longer shaft uh, friction adjustment knob 
in place as well. Next we fit the GT2 pulley on the end and tighten both grub screws making sure that one of the grub screws is aligned with the flat on the shaft. This is a 60 tooth GT2 pulley. Once both grub screws are tight, this part of the assembly is complete. Just checking that the focus knob turns freely. Okay, now we're going to fit this on back onto the telescope, making sure that the GT2 pulley and the front part of the L bracket are towards the front of the telescope. So initially you just fit the four bolts loosely. And before we tighten these, we'll just make a little bit of a manual adjustment to the L bracket to make sure that it's square. Now you've got to be careful here to make sure that the friction knob is loosened right off so that you're not actually bending the bar inside. That needs to be nice and loose so that you can tighten those screws down hard. And once those are fully tightened, then you can tighten up the friction knob. So tightening up the friction knob now and then we can just try out by turning the pulley and see if the focus moves. It's slipping slightly there so I'll tighten the tension knob a bit more and now it's working very nicely. So the next step is to bring the motor in. Now here you can keep the original plate on the motor which is useful. So we just need to fit the second 60 tooth GT2 pulley onto the motor shaft tightening the grub screws again making sure that one of them is against the flat on the motor shaft. Now this will be positioned here so that the two GT2 pulleys line up with one another. So it's time to fit the actual pulley belt itself. It's a 228mm GT2 pulley belt and it's going to sit in this position. So now we can fit these two bolts. These are M4 by 10 bolts with washers on both sides and then a nylon lock nut on the back. So just doing these up loosely by hand first of all and fitting the one on the other side as well. The slots in the black plate that come off the motor are really handy because they allow us to tension the belt which you'll see shortly. Before we tension the belt we need to tighten these two uh, nuts up, uh, nylon nuts up a bit more. So I'm holding the nuts with a small pair of pliers and then tightening the bolts, adjusting the tension on the belt and then finishing off tightening up these these nuts so they're really good and tight and checking the belt tension is what you want it to be. should get one to two millimeters of movement when you press halfway around down the pulley, halfway along the gap. So a final tweak to really tighten those bolts so that the motor doesn't shift. And there we go. Now we can plug in the manual controller and give it a test. And you can see that that's working really nicely. Focus tube is moving out and running the other way, it's moving in. So that's working really nicely. Okay. Just want to say a really big thank you to everyone that's liked and commented and given me great feedback 
and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. The channel's gradually growing and uh, keeps me motivated. Until next time, clear skies. See you later. Thank you.